excited to be here? Yeah, all right, just a couple announcements to get us started tonight. Uh, who has signed up for Care Week? A few of you, all right, so uh, Care Week's coming up. The deadline to register for Care Week is June 5th. June 5th, that's a little bit over two weeks. So, but if you have already registered, you got put into a drawing for a $50 Grubhub gift card. So we're gonna go ahead and do that drawing now if we're ready. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do that drawing now. Maybe. If you're not signed up for Carrick, you should really get signed up. It's gonna be a great time. Again, it's an optional overnight event, so you don't have to spend the night, but you can spend the night. And just so you know, we are we are limiting what we're doing at the camp, at the sports arts camp. So we're gonna be doing soccer, basketball, baseball, and art. So those are the four we're doing this year. We're making it a little bit more simplified. So make sure you sign up for that. Uh, we'll do the other announcements, come back to the drawing in a second. Summer Institute, the Summer Institute coming up the first week of June. Um, the deadline registration, yeah. The deadline registration for that is this Sunday, May 23rd. So if you wanna get signed up for that, make sure you do that uh, this week. And then in a couple weeks on June 2nd, we're having our, kick our summer kickoff, we're doing Color Wars. Who's excited about Color Wars? Not super excited, right, we gotta be more excited about that. All right, so we're going to do the announcement. We're going to do the drawing afterwards, but Color Wars is in. It's June second. Now, a couple things about Color Wars. Uh, you need to wear a white shirt when you come here. Um, you got to. Oh yeah. And I need you. This is going to be a weird. Like when Tyler told me to announce this, I was like, "That's weird." But you need to go to the bathroom before you come. What? That's what I said. But so they don't want us coming into the church because Color Wars. If you don't know, uh, you're going to get messy. You're going to have like color powder all over you. So they don't want us bringing the church. Now there is, I hear they're gonna probably have like a porta potty, but I'd recommend going to the bathroom before you come, so you try not to have huge it. And also, um, don't come inside. We're gonna meet out at the barn out back where we've had our bonfires and stuff. So we'll meet out there and start inviting your friends. It's a great event to invite your friends to, and they'll have a good time. So we got Color Wars, we got Summer Institute, and then Care Week, so make sure you register for those. And then again, we'll do the drawing at the end of the service real quick. Um, so, all right, who wants to play a game? All right, so I need everyone, everyone that wants to play, you don't have to play. You want to play, stand up. And then I need the girls to form a circle and the boys to form a circle. All right. Now, you got you to, girls, good job, boys, not so good. Spread your circle out. You gotta have a bigger circle. Look at, look at the girls. Look at the, look at the girls. Make your circle look like theirs. You gotta have space. Now, I need you all to turn to your right and face the back of the person in front of you. Carly, face that way. Everyone turn. Not everyone. You need to be. There you go. All right, boys. Yeah, you need, starting with Noah, everyone needs to be looking at the person in front of them like Noah is. All right, now, I need one girl volunteer to not play the game and be a judge for the boys. Carly, come on up. Hop in the middle of their circle. Boys, I need one volunteer. Zane, hop in the middle of the girl's circle. Hop in the middle of the circle. They're your judges to keep it fair. Now. This game is called Cheat Code. Cheat Code. Now, you're in church, so I need you to be honest when I ask this question. Who has ever cheated by getting a cheat code in a video game? Looking something up online, right? Now, some of us in the room are old enough to remember when to get a cheat code, you had to put in an actual code on your controller. Now, some of us are even old enough to remember there wasn't many buttons on your controller. So to put the cheat code in, you'd have to do a series of up, down, left, right in different orders. So for this game, I'm gonna give you a, one ball for each group. I'm gonna give you a cheat code. Your job is to pass the ball to the person in front of you in the order of the cheat code. So for example, if I say left, left, if Lauren has the ball, she has to pass to, to Hannah's left. And then Hannah would have to pass to the left. Right? So if I said like left, right, left, it would be 
Lauren left, Hannah right, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Skyla left. So you have to follow the code. Judges, Zane and Carly, if they don't get the code right, in the right order, it goes back to the person that started with the ball. All right? So Lauren's gonna start there. Noah, you're gonna start there. Here's your first, oh, so left is going on the left side. Hey, listen, there's four possibilities. Left side, right side. If I say up, it goes over their head. And if I say down, it goes between the legs. All right? Simple. Here's your first code to get it around. Here's your first code, I'm saying it once. Left, right, up. Zane's watching. If, they, if the judge says you're done, you're done, you're done, you start over. Okay, Carly, that's wrong. That was wrong, that was right, start over. No, you went right, it's left, right, up. One, keep going, just repeat the code. So left, right, up, left, right, up. Put your code in, get the ball around the circle. Once it gets back to Lauren and Noah, give it, get it back to Lauren with the code and then freeze. All right, so girls got it. That's a point for the girls. The boys are really, really struggling, and this is an easy cheat code. Yes, you are. All right, are we there yet? Left, right, up. All right, so the girls, are we there yet? Uh, yeah, all right. Stop right there. All right. Girls got it around quicker, so they get the point for this round. All right, so that's how we're doing it. We're going to do... All right, here's your next code to get around the circle. It's a speed game. The first one to get it gets the point. Down, up, left. Point for the girls. All right. All right, get the ball back to Noah. Ball back to Noah. Here's your next cut. They're getting harder. Left, left, right, up, down. Left, left, right, up, down. Left, left, right, up, down. Carly and Zane, make sure you call them out. They mess it up. They look very confused over there. Yeah, I thought they would win that. That's another point for the girls. Boo, boys, boo. All right, back to Noah. This, this one's worth two. This one's worth two. Up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right. Move quickly, move quickly, boys. Or two for the boys. Three to two, three to two. All right. This one's worth two points. Two points. Huh? That one was worth two. And you guys had three, right? Three to two. This one's worth two points. Down, down, up, left, right. Ready? I'm saying it once. Left, right, left, right, up, down, up. Alright, let me pray for you guys and then they're gonna lead us in worship. 
Let's, hey, hey, let's pray, guys. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we're so thankful that we have the opportunity to be in your house. Like, God, I pray right now, uh, God, that we just focus in on you, God, that we can uh, leave the distractions outside this church. God, I'm, I'm thankful that we have the ability to come and to worship and to praise you. Just God, open our hearts, open our minds. Um, let us just give you back the praise that you are so worthy of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the book of first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 is where we've been in our uh, series called the uh, authentic faith um and if you haven't been here that's fine but what the idea behind this series is we're in like week four now of it um is a life that is real right we want you to have a faith and a life that is completely authentic and completely real our hope and prayer as we were prepping for this series in our, in our teaching team was that at the end of the series, your faith will be more real and more genuine than it was at the start of the series, right? And so how many people grew up in church? Okay, so a fair amount of you grew up in church. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. There's also nothing wrong if you didn't grow up in church. I never grew up in church. I didn't step foot in a church until I was in high school. But one of the things that we have to be careful of, no matter when you start coming to church, whether it's as a baby, uh, like my kids, all all of them except Chase took their first steps in our nursery at our at, our, at my last church during VBS week. Uh, especially the boys that were all born in September, they all started walking about the same time. So during VBS, it was all, and we always missed it, me and my wife, because we were busy working VBS, and we'd come to get the kids at the end of the night, and they'd be like, your kids just took their first steps. We're like, really? We miss it, right? But So my kids grew up in church, uh, and so there's nothing wrong with that. But one of the things we have to be careful of when we've been in church for a while is that your faith is your faith. Not your parents' faith, not your grandma's faith, not your best friend's faith, not your grow group leader's faith, but your faith is your faith. So just because your parents bring you to church every Sunday, and just because you sat through Sunday school as a little kid and learned all the Bible stories that you know we learned in Sunday school, that doesn't make your faith real. It is an authentic, real faith is when you take ownership in that. How many of you live in a house with your parents? Or some sort of adult who is responsible for you, right? Do any of you help pay for the house payment? Right? You don't. Is it your house? No. It's your parents' house, right? They're letting you live there, but it's your parents' house, right? How many of you ride in a car that is your parents' car? None of you have driver's license, do you? That'd be like super early, right? You don't have a car. Your parents have the car, right? Just faith is just like that. Just because your parents have faith doesn't mean that you do. You can if you own it, right? You can own a house if you start paying for it and then you own it. You can own a car if you start paying for it and pay for the gas of it. But until you do that, it's just your parents that you're allowed to ride in. You're a house that you're allowed to stay in. With your faith, it's something that you have to own. If you want it to be a real faith, your faith, your relationship is yours. The title for tonight's part of this series of authentic faith is, is the love God hates. The love God hates. If you want to write down this main point, if you take notes, I'll give you this main point right off the bat. This is what I want you to take away from this. A true love for God means we give up our love for the world. A true love for God means we give up our love for the world. In the book of uh, 1 John chapter 2, I'm just going to read three verses. 
Starting in verse 15 of chapter 2, the Bible says this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Jeremy, Father, we're so thankful we have the opportunity tonight to open your word. And God, I pray that as we dig into these scriptures in our large group time and in our group times, God, that you open our eyes to whatever truth it is that you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so let me ask you a question. Who created the world? God. God. Who created the things in the world? God. Who created the people? God. So why is he telling us not to love the world? Anna, what do you think? The world is used to be a figure of the sin in the world, not the creation of the world. That's absolutely correct. The world is used as uh, a reference to the sin, not the creation, right? So a lot of times we read this, we go, well, wait a minute. God is telling me that I got to love, I, I got to love him, and by doing that, I cannot love the world, but he created the world. How can I love God if I hate what he created? That's not what he's saying here, right? The word world here is used as, as Hannah says, uses a reference to the uh, realm of Satan's influence. Boys and boys can tell me, what does sin mean? Self-indulging self nature, right? That's Mr. Bob's, right? <laughs> Mr. Bob, sin, self-indulging nature. So when, when the Bible tells us here that we're not to love the world, it's not the word to go out and hate the world. It's not the word to go out and hate the people in the world, but we're to hate Satan's influence in the world, which is sin, right? And so we love people and we love the creation. We just don't love the sin. And so one of the biggest parts of this is that I want you to understand that you are to love every person irregardless of what they do or where they've been or what type of sin they're doing. We love the person because each and every person on this earth was created by God. Now, their, their actions, the things they do in their life could be sinful, and that's what we hate. But we cannot hate a person because if we hate a person, we are hating God's creation. And if we hate God's creation, we can't possibly then love God. Because you can't love somebody, but then hate what they create. So it's, it's a tricky thing to understand, but we have to be loving to the things and the people in our lives. So that doesn't mean that we have to love their sins. And so it tells us in 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. And if you do, if you are a lover of the world, if you are a lover of the sin, then it tells us the love of the Father is not in us, right? So we can't love sin and love God. It is impossible to love sin and say, I still love Jesus and I'm a Christian. It just doesn't work, right? And so it tells us that there. Well, then it goes on, well, why can't we? Why can't we love sin? And the reason we can is in verse 16. It's the stuff of the world is not of God and it's fallen into a dark place. Now, in verse 16, we see three basic categories of this worldliness, this sin that we are to be on the lookout for. The first one there is, is physical pleasure. The second one is what we see. And the third is pride in possessions. He goes through that and he says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions. If we look at those three categories and break it down all three of these have some things in common the first one is they show selfishness you cannot be a selfish person and be in a intimate relationship with christ selfishness in christ do, do not work how do i know that because christ did the most selfless thing when he died on the cross for I was doing some devotions this week and I came across one of my favorite verses and that is uh, in Mark, in the book of Mark where he's pray Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane right before the betrayal happens. And it is, it, to me, it is such a powerful verse of leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. But what it shows us is how selfless Jesus was. So he finishes the Lord's Supper. He heads out with the disciples out to the garden. Then he stops, leaves a group of the disciples, takes three with them, goes a little farther, 
stops again, leaves those three, and then he goes farther into the garden. So he's going to a place where he's by himself with, with God. He, he is going to pray with God. And I was reading through some of the, the commentaries and the, the literature behind this, this ver these verses in Mark. And one of the things that it, it says you can picture is Jesus walks deep in the garden and he throws himself on the ground in prayer to God. And now if you read through the book of Mark, it only takes like three verses to capture this. Most Bible scholars believe Jesus was praying to God for an hour. And in his prayer to God, he is praying so hard and so strong. He's filled with passion of this prayer that he starts sweating blood. But the, 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 the part that I love is in that prayer, he goes, he, you have to think, he's, he's God, right? He's part of the Trinity, and he knows what's about to happen. So the, the crucifixion was not a, uh, an event that just jumped and, and caught Jesus off guard. He knew it was going to happen. So he's in this prayer with God, and he's just praying, God, if, if there's any other way, let this pass by me. Jesus did not want to go to the cross. He knew what was going to happen. He knew it was not something he wanted to do. And so he's praying, God, if there's any other way, let this pass by me. But then he goes, but God, not my will, yours. If it's your will, basically he was saying, God, if this is what you want, I'll do it. I'll be selfless. I will turn my body over to be beaten and bruised and stabbed and nailed to a cross, even though I, I don't deserve it. I did nothing wrong. Right? Whoever, who's got a sibling and everyone blamed for something their sibling did? Right? Amen. Right? And you've been mad, right? Go ahead. I've been mad when I happened to me. I have an older brother. Like, I got blamed for everything because I was a baby brother. Plus, 99% of the time it was my fault anyway. But I've been blamed before, right? And you get mad because, like, I get punished. Maybe, you, you know, whatever your parents' punishment was, you know, take something away from you or ground you or whatever. And you get mad because you're like, I did nothing wrong. Like, Jesus was like, I did nothing wrong. But yet I got to go take the punishment for all you people that did something wrong, right? But ultimately what we see is the selflessness in Jesus that said, if it's God's will, Father, if it's your will that this done, I'm in 100%. And from that moment forward, when it was made clear to Jesus in prayer, yep, sorry, sorry, Jesus, this is my will for your life. You're going to go do this. You don't see again anywhere in Scripture where Jesus fought back. Think about it. If, if you were going to be crucified, would you maybe put up a little bit of a fight? Think about the story Jesus would have to do. If someone was coming to, they were whipping them, with, whipping them, would you fight back some? Yeah. Yeah, you would. If you were going up the hill carrying your cross, would you maybe try to like move away or slow down, right? You would fight it a little bit because that's just our natural Reaction, but we don't see a scripture where Jesus fought it because he, he submitted to God and said, in the garden, said, if this is your will, I'm fine with it. And that was the ultimate sense of being selfless. And so when we look at these things in 1 John that are of the world, we cannot love sin and love God because when we love sin, it's we're being, we're being self, selfish. I'll always be careful. Selfish and selfish. Self, yeah, too close. We're being selfish when we when we love sin, right? And Jesus said, you can't, you can't do that. You can't be selfish. So that's one of the things that has in common. The second thing that we see if you look at these things of the world is, is greed. Especially if you look at this last one, the prize and possessions, right? It's 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 what do I have? Right? What like well, first off, you have nothing. Let's just let put that you have nothing. Your parents, guess what? Your parents have nothing outside of Jesus outside of God. God has given them everything. And so we have to understand that. I don't care if you have a dollar in the bank or a million dollars in the bank. That's not, you did not do that. That came from God. But when we start to get greedy and try to take credit, start to hoard up, you know, maybe you go out and buy the nicest sports car, or you go out and buy the nicest purse or the nicest shoes. Like there's nothing wrong with having nice things, but when you put your attention in that and take it off of, off of God, that's where the greed comes in. And all of a sudden, you're trying to get, you have to have the newest iPhone. You have to have the newest video game system, right? And, and all you do is work because I got to have it. I got to have it. You know, my friend's got this. My friend's got that. We start to get greedy in the, in the possessions of this world. 
right? And so part of loving God and not loving the world is not to be greedy, not to be like, I have to have these possessions, right? And here's the thing about both selfishness and greed. They start really small in your life and in your heart, right? Let me give you an example. What would you do if you walked and you're going into Kroger to go grocery shopping? You get out of the car, your mom and dad parked right next to one of those park corrals, right, where they collect the cars. You look over in there, and there is your favorite food sitting in the car. All right, whatever your favorite food. Sitting in the car, obviously the person before you left, left in the car, what do you do? Some of you might say, well, I'll just, they left it, so I'll grab it, put it in my car, and no big deal, right? It's not a big deal, but dollar can of SpaghettiOs, let's say. It's cheap. It's a buck. 69 cents. 69 cents. See? That's, man, if, if you can get a can of something for 69 cents, I'm not sure I want to put it in my body. I don't eat SpaghettiOs, but... Like, I'd rather buy a 99 cent box of spaghetti and just make it, because that's at least somewhat legit, but I know my kids love SpaghettiOs, so here's a question. Side note, rabbit trail. Meatballs or no meatballs or SpaghettiOs? Wow. My house is a house divided too on that, so we got to buy both. But I just had to ask that question, right? But the thing about that meat, wait a minute. Okay, so SpaghettiOs is just some pasta in a can for 69 cents. But then you have meatballs, it's meatballs? Like, is it real meat for 69 cents? Are they more expensive? Are they like 79 cents or 89 cents? Same price. So, so it's probably not real meat dinner, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's meat for 69 cents, don't eat it. Um, Sorry, I digress. But, so, it's no big deal. Like, it's a 69 cent can of SpaghettiOs, but is it your 69 cent can of SpaghettiOs? No. Is it a big deal if you pick it up and put it in your car? Not really. Yeah, right? But that's, that's how selfishness and greed start. They start so small, it's like, well, that's not a big deal. Right? Well, the next time, maybe it's not a 69 cent can of SpaghettiOs. Maybe it's like a 12.99 New York strip steak. Right? Real meat. Right? And, or maybe it's the next time it's a $25 filet mignon piece of meat, right? Like, and all of a sudden you, it, it, it can grow that easy. Greed and stuff. Right. And then next thing you know, you're stealing a Lamborghini, right? I mean, it's, it's, but greed and that it grows, it, grow, it starts small and can grow and overtake your life so quick. Right? So if you want to have this, a life that is real, a life that is authentic in Christ, you have to say, I'm going to love God and not love the world. I'm not going to love the sin in the world. And I'm not going to let selfishness and greed overtake my life to where it starts small and it starts to fill my heart and fill my heart and fill my heart. And all of a sudden, it's full-blown sin where I'm self-indulging and I'm in the world 100%. And all of a sudden, I look over and I'm nowhere near God. Because I can't be. This is, he won't accept that relationship. But the amazing thing about Jesus is that it's okay. It's okay. Look, it's okay if you've been over here in the world. Jesus doesn't turn his back on you. Jesus still welcomes you with open arms, but what he asks you to do is to repent. And when you repent, you turn from your selfishness. You turn from your greed. It's behind you. Now you're moving towards Jesus, leaving the world in your rearview mirror. And as you grow closer to Jesus, you get farther from the world. But the thing about our faith walk is that it's a constant forward and back. There's going to be times that you, if this little box is Jesus, you are like right here with Jesus. And then you start to creep back. And then maybe something happens and you take a step forward. But then something happens and all of a sudden there's times you could end up way back at the world at this box. And you're that far from Jesus. But Jesus is still standing there saying, I welcome you if you repent. So it's not like if you love the world, all of a sudden you lose that ability to be with Jesus. You just have to repent and come back to a, a life that is real, a life that is authentic, and a life that is about loving Jesus and not loving the world. All right, let's pray that you guys will spend more time talking about this in your groups. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that you give, um, give us these words as a guide to our life. God, I know there are students and leaders in this room who... who are going through struggles or have gone through struggles, God, to where 
they t sometimes love the world more than they should. And God, I pray that if that is, is true tonight, Lord, that you help them to see that they need to love you more and love the world less. God, I pray that you draw them close to you, close to your loving arms, close to that intimate and authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray this as we go into our, our grow groups. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, before you go, are we are we good? Yep. All right, we're going to do the drawing for the $50 Grow Hope gift card for those who are registered for Care Week. Done. There we go. All right, we got on the screen. Woo! We are rolling. Yeah, sure. Maybe. Technology is wonderful. Give it up for Sydney. There we go. She got it going. All right, here we go. Now we got it going. Jenna, not here, but we will get her that. Jenna Fox wins the gift card. All right. Can we text her? Huh? Can we text her? If you want to. All right. You guys are dismissed to your drug groups. Thank you.